Morning, um, welcome to the shed. Um, just uh, going to start off a new project today. We're going to be making another key keeper similar to our frog one but from this shell. Uh, now apparently this is something called a fighting conch. I can't find this exact model um, but it's uh, I think it's a, a fighting conch. This is a big one. Uh, you get them on the Florida coast. Uh, my brother gave it to me. He's, he's very well travelled. I think he got this from some far-flung destination. Isle of Wight, I think he said. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, also on that subject, he says he doesn't like this bit of cardboard. He prefers the graffiti. So it's coming down. There you go, that's better, isn't it? Okay, so there she is. That That is a really big one. I think, uh, according to Wikipedia, they grow to about three inches high, which that's more than three inches high, and four inches long, and that's more than four inches long. But so maybe I've got the uh, the type slightly wrong. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they're called a fighting conch. A couple of opinions. One is that nobody knows how to say conch. Apparently, it should be conch. I don't know. I prefer conch. Sounds nicer. Also, uh, Lord of the Flies. It's a conch in there, surely. The other reason is that apparently the males. Uh, do sometimes fight each other so that must be why it's called a fighting conch although I don't know who witnessed that in order to give them the name okay so it's a bit of an awkward shape um, so we're going to have to make two moulds one for the top and one for the bottom the bottom being the most difficult um, we've got some breakage there or maybe that's how it grows so I'm going to have to use some uh, um, modelling clay in there also this ridge here is a bit too deep and got a bit of a, an overhang there so I'm gonna to have to use some modeling clay in there as well obviously fill up the uh, the opening in the bottom um, and then we should be able to make a mold for the bottom and a mold for the top but then I've got to find a way of joining them together so I think I'll make the top half then the bottom half then find a way of fixing the two together and make the other halves of each mold Sounds a bit weird, but you know what you get the idea. Okay, let's get the modelling clay out and uh, give it a go. I think I better buy some plasticine. I think that might be easier as well, but I won't do that on this one, but on the next one. So I have um, filled in the base, tried to leave some of this texture there because it's quite important uh, and also gone round that ridge there and sort of had to create my own version of the end there. Unfortunately it was just a bit too gnarly, sorry to sound like Jamie Oliver, but it was just a bit gnarly in that bit there so I had to fill that in as well so I'll lose a little bit there but it's plenty of texture on the on the top there so I think that'll look really nice in lead so one of the difficulties I'm going to have is how do I align my mold I'm guessing through this um, so where, where is the half going to be that we split split the key keeper I, I'm guessing just below this point here not quite sure how I'm going to do it probably from here to just below here I think I should be able to halve it there I'm going to have to try and find a good line to do that um, yeah Fairly happy with that. Now let's get on and make the box. Okay, I cut my pieces for my mould. Uh, I'm going to do one of my uh, L-shaped moulds that's adjustable, same as I did for the uh, frog and 
whatever it was, uh, the lead goddess. So I'll build that and then I'll come back to you. I'm also I'm going to varnish it this time using a, a uh, paintbrush. Uh, I tried using a spray and it, you, it costs about 12 quid for three cans. They just don't work. They just don't give it a proper coat. So I'm going to buy a tin, be patient, leave it to dry overnight and hopefully we'll get a better result. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good. I just did a single pocket screw. I've done it on the outside, um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, if you watch my cyclone video, uh, making my vacuum cyclone, I'll put a link up here. Um, I had those screws on the inside, which meant that the screw point came, started to come through the side of the wood, um, and that wasn't very good. So I learned a lesson there, and I've actually done something about it this time. You can get little plugs. In fact, I've got some of those. Hold on a second. I don't think it's worth doing it for these, uh, for, for a mould. Oh, these are the wrong size anyway. But you can get these little plugs. That's the three quarter inch one. Um, but these plugs will block your holes for you. So I might buy some more of those. In fact, that makes me realise that that's not quite in there properly. But anyway, okay, so the mould is done. It's adjustable within reason, a little bit of adjustment there. Um, I'm now just going to uh, tidy up the edges, varnish it, and then uh, as soon as we get my silicon, which should be arriving tomorrow, we'll do our first pour. I'm making a start on the mould for the conch, the fighting conch. Uh, I have given that a coat of the uh, release agent. I don't know if it'll dry, but it should still work. Uh, I've got some more scrap uh, silicon to cut up. Uh, basically, I put in, well, I suppose about half an inch of silicon mix with some scraps just to create a baseline because I need a bit of thickness for this to sit on. So this is gonna sit on those four points like so. I'm gonna then fill up the mold to this level here, this little piece here will be able to come out of the mold, but I need the actual uh, key or the line where the two, where the molds split to be here. Because remember I'm making two molds to create two halves of uh, the conch. So I have to keep thinking about what I'm doing, but that's, that's where I'm going for. So that's the biggest pour um, and that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm just waiting for that to go off. As soon as that's gone off enough to uh, support the weight of this, I'll be doing the next pour. So um, the base of the mould is ready. It's still tacky, but that's good because it means the next level will, will stick. So this is the tricky bit. Uh, I need to do a good pour, but I'm going to pour a small amount, sink it in halfway, then pour the rest around up to this level here. Okay, so let's do it. It's going to be very hot in the shed t today, so uh, I'm trying to get this done early. Uh, it's only about, I don't know, half eight. Caught tonight. Um, yeah, so get this done early so that we can have a complete mould by the end of today. I'm going to cast one half of the mould in lead, which I can then use to do the other half so that I know that it'll fit. That is the plan anyway. Let's see how we get on. There's a few flies in here as well, which are a bit annoying. Okay, let's do it. I'm going on to time lapse now so uh, you can enjoy. Well, you probably saw I had some shenanigans there trying to get the uh, uh, the the conch shell lined up. I didn't realise that it would float, so I'm 
pouring the uh, silicon in and it's just keeps start moving around. So I've kind of wedged it with a hammer. Um, I think I've made a slight error. I don't think my mould is quite wide enough. So if we get any leakage, well, we'll have to just sort of pack it out or something. Or if I put it in a good, decent box, it should be all right. Okay, so uh, now I need to get, that needs to be really, really well cured because I'm gonna have to get the knife on it to uh, uh, make it nice and neat and tidy, ready for the, the next half to go on. So, good time to go and walk the dog, I think. Back in a few hours. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours, it's getting really hot in here. So this is the mold as extracted from, from the box. I did put a bit of a slant on it to try and get the right uh, angle. Um, so now I'm gonna just try and clean that up, try and find the halfway line, I'm not really sure where it's gonna be. Um, and then we'll pour the top half. Then we'll have two halves to create two molds from. Okay, I'll go on to time lapse and uh, you can watch me clean this up if you want to. So I am actually going to take the shell out before I pour the second half of the mould just to see if I've got any weird bits and also I'm not really sure if I'm in the right place so I'm just going to do that now. Hopefully it should come out really easily. Looks good so far. Oh, a bit thin there. See what I mean about the thinness? That's a problem. I'll have to thicken that up. looks amazing. So, do I need to clean that up? I think that's alright as it is, as long as I can get it in and out, and as long as I'll be able to get the, the top off, which I will, that's going to be looking good. Okay, I'll do the next pour, I'll get ready for the next pour. Okay, um, you might have noticed that I had a bit of a problem there, got myself in a bit, bit of a pickle, dropped the uh, beaker into the mould itself, uh, so got silicon everywhere. Basically I've got a phone call on my phone, which is what I'm using to film. So that's uh, one of the uh, uh, the benefits or non-benefits of using your phone to film uh, videos. Anyway, so that's all ready. I also had another little thought. I've actually got two products in one here, I've realised. So there's nothing to stop me using the two main halves of the mold to make a solid lead shell. It can be bloody heavy, probably about 12 kilos of lead, I should think. But what a good doorstop that would make, wouldn't it? Nobody's gonna shut that door. Okay, right, uh, back to you in a couple of hours when that's all fully cured and we'll have a look and see what we've got. So um, it's only been about an hour and this is already cured, so that's because of the temperature in here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna split this mold there's a few little air bubbles there, but I think they should be all right on the surface of the actual um, conch itself. I am conscious that I should have made a pun about conches. Okay, here we go. Sometimes you get a little bit of membrane across the across the seal, which makes it look like it's not going to come apart, and then it just does. Have gone time lapse. Don't know, you need to see something in real time. You need to see the struggles that I go through. Okay, there you go, there's your two halves of your mold. I realised I didn't put any locator lugs in there. 
That was a bit silly of me, but never mind. Um, I can do that for the uh, second half of each mould. In fact, I'll do that in a moment. Okay, that is your mould. Pretty happy with that. There's one small air bubble there, tiny one there, but that'll clean up okay. Morning and welcome to the shed. It's the day after uh, the mould making day. It got very very hot in here. Uh, I probably should have um, stopped and waited till today but you know I wanted to press on. So that's why most of it was in stop motion because... Uh, stop motion? So that's why most of it was in um, time lapse. I was literally melting. So uh, you know my makeup girl I had to send her home she could do nothing with me. Um, anyway, so I made some good progress, but I also made a few mistakes. Um, you might have seen me doing the plasticine, uh, which worked well on this half. So I managed, to, so using that plasticine moulded into the mould, I managed to make the bottom half of the shell, and that's turned out pretty good. It's got a nice ridge on it. However, because some of the plasticine wouldn't come out of the mould, I don't know if you can see that. I've got some little bits missing. And that's because it just got so hot. What I should have done is put it in the freezer and just uh, sort of broken it out. It would have been much easier. So I may have to recast the other side. And this is the other side, which I also did. I think I did that on the time lapse. Um, and that was the original one. And I'm not sure if this ridge here came out very well. So I'm not really sure until I cast that. So I can't cast that because I've now developed a hole in the side of the mould. You saw where it was a bit thin, um, and yeah, it basically, when I pulled the two parts of the mould apart, it uh, tore off. So, I'm gonna take my time, and I'm gonna fix it before I try and do a cast. I was gonna just cast through the side there, but then I thought, no, let's do the job properly. So I'm gonna put, pop this back in the mould, uh, mould making box, pour a thin layer of, uh, silicon over there with with the shell inside and then cut it again and then I should have at least enough wall to uh, allow me to pour it then I've got to make a mold box and do the do the pour so I'm going to do that in the next video because this one's getting rather long and also I feel like I'm under a bit of pressure so I want to make sure that I do it right and not just rush it so really we've got a sort of half a result and in the next video I will complete the top half um, and wrap it up. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, I think it's up here now, subscribe and uh, you know, share it on social media, tell your friends, do a TikTok about how much you like the videos, that sort of thing. All right, thanks very much for watching. See you soon.